Okay, we're going to attempt the top 10 indicators that you might have bad culture, along with CEO of Crosslink Consulting, Patrick Reynolds. I am David Letterman without the beard. No, no, I'm not. I'm Neil Gordon from Augusta Business Daily, and we'll see how many we can get through. But there are a lot of indicators. Um, What would you highlight as maybe the number one reason that there's problems with culture at a company? Number one reason I would say is um, it hasn't been curated with intentionality. Mm -hmm. Um, Is the boss unaware? Often, very Mm -hmm. often. Um, It was true for us. We started off, I used to think that, um, I used to despise the word manager. Mm -hmm. I used to think that was a four-letter word, uh, that I would hire mature people, adults, and you know, we would work well together and we would do our things that we were responsible for. And we would, yeah, all that's a pipe dream. Everyone needs management. Everyone needs direction and everyone needs some degree of focus and direction from right. the manager. And we use the word manager uh, and management to describe that task. And it's not quite as icky as I used to think. <laughs> It can grow to be a delight, but if you're not intentional about focusing on your culture and curating it and being intentional about it, it can't go anywhere but down. What if you throw a bad seed into the plant at work? What does that do to the culture? It will utterly destroy it, and I speak from experience. Mm. Um, And it will take a long time to correct uh, and maybe – uh, many people losing their their job. Wow! So better to uh, tackle that very very early, and that's really a large part of our focus at this expo is to help businesses recognize it, recognize the need for it, and to begin to correct you know steer the ship in the right direction. Begin because it's a ship. Your company's culture doesn't pivot overnight. But you beginning to take steps can change that heading by degrees, week by week, till it's headed in a direction that you're delighted in. And if um, your employees are not rowing the boat in the right direction, are there any specific signs you notice in terms of, you know, what do they say? Everybody's working for the weekend. You know, is is there some kind of I don't know, habits of how they take seriously their jobs. Yeah, and we all recognize it. I mean, in any workplace, I think that you have folks that are very engaged, that they're uh, driven, that they're focused, that they keep their nose down, they get their work done, and they seem to do it with joy. But that isn't, at many workplaces, that isn't the norm. That's the exception. And if culture isn't, embraced and and driven in the right direction that person's going to lose their zeal or they're going to leave the company so i think that that's probably the first obvious indicator that many of us have seen we lose employees and we lose people who were good employees that became mediocre employees and then they left so that's a giant indicator that your culture isn't headed in the right direction losing employees and uh, you know Why do they leave? Do they leave because it's a bad job? I subscribe to the idea that people don't leave bad jobs. They leave bad bosses. Mm -hmm. There's a few exceptions. So if you've lost someone, don't beat yourself up too much. Um, Sometimes it wasn't you. Sometimes it was. Usually, maybe. (laughs) Um, But as the boss... The good side is, the good part to that story is you can learn how to embrace and shift that culture in the right direction. Uh, It's what I learned in 2019. It's what I was starving for and went away to a conference very much to gain the tools, to gain the learning so that I could come and make impact on culture. And, you know, if you've lost someone, it's likely culture, so... Start focusing on it and make that shift. So for an employer that may be listening, um, let's look a little bit at the responsibility on them. And I, 
I think of someone that I work. I work for a fellow by the name of uh, Derek May, who's now with Azalea Investments downtown Augusta. And for decades, he worked for Morris Communications. And he is someone that I felt that I liked and I respected. Do you, should you, would it be good to have both? What, which is more important to you from an employer standpoint? Should I want to be liked? Should I want to be respected? These are hard questions. I know. Um, my my off the cuff answer would simply be: um, you can't always be liked. Mm-hmm. Uh, you shouldn't decide what action to take based on um, whether it's going to be liked by the people mm-hmm. that you serve or not. It really has to be in line with the mission that you're focused on. And too often that means making hard choices and having tough conversations that hold people to account, hold employees to account, and hold them to a standard. And it's not because you don't like them. It's because you're a team, and as the coach of that team, you've got to make some hard calls. Sometimes you've got to trade players, Mm as we talked about before. Mm -hmm. But it's... The, peop- the players that you trade probably aren't going to like you a whole lot, but the synergy of the team that remains is often st- it's stunning how well it improves and climbs the attitude across the board when you let go of that caustic person mm-hmm. who was causing friction. They were critical to your organization. I know. You couldn't live without them. I know. But as soon as you get rid of that caustic person on the team, it's stunning how little impact their loss makes to you. I'm sorry if that sounds harsh, Mm -hmm. but everyone else steps up with new and renewed energy and zeal. So that idea of respect, it's not respect because you dress a certain way or you speak a certain way. It's respect because you're going to bat for the mission. You're going to bat for the team, even if that means trading some players. Well, once again, we're speaking with Patrick Reynolds, the CEO of uh, Crosslink Consulting and online. It's crosslinkconsulting.net. Um, our expo, abdexpo.com, coming up on October the 28th. And Patrick are here, and I are here, courtesy of Augusta Podcasts, and their website is augustapodcasts.com. And we house a number of their podcasts on AugustaBusinessDaily.com. So I am dot com out and dot netted out, but I wanted to share a lot of that uh, information. And um, how much does taking responsibility and accountability and ownership have to ultimately do with a good or a bad culture within an organization? I think it goes back to that earlier point about people don't leave a bad job, they leave a bad boss. So if, if you, even if you're not the boss, if you will embrace the impact that you can have on the culture of your organization, um, personal responsibility goes a long way. Uh, I can't overstate that. If, if you're the boss or if you're not the boss, there's still a tremendous impact by doing some of the things that we're going to teach during this conference, learning some of those tools, impacting your your life impacting your life and again i i I can't overstate this these principles that you're going to learn and the 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 way that you're going to be equipped when you leave this expo it's going to have impact outside of the office as well it's going to have impact in personal relationships um but if you will take personal responsibility and you will begin to embrace it and begin to embrace that you can impact the culture in your workplace and that you, it'll benefit you a lot if you embrace it and start changing it. You're going to see impact in the first month. You're going to see um, some of those other indicators that we've we've talked about a little bit. Um, how you dread starting your Monday at the office. That's going to start to shift mm. when the culture in an organization begins to move from bad to great. Um, there's a newfound energy on the team. Everyone's eager to get there. We, we started this talk out by 
um, indicators that culture may be in jeopardy, that it may be headed in the wrong direction. And, and one of those practical, pragmatic examples is people show up just in time to clock in without getting in trouble, and they clock out as early as possible without getting in trouble. It's almost like they don't want to be there. Mm-hmm. And if you're yeah. seeing that sort of behavior, you've got a clear indicator culture's in danger. I had a few people who worked for me that were clock watchers. <laughs> yes, we've, we've, we all know the kind. Uh, we all know the type. And I mentioned working for the weekend. They, um, man, they are thinking about the weekend, and they're, and they're always tired. They're always kind of exhausted. And um, they kind of, you know, they did it and passed the buck kind of thing. So I think somehow in the spirit of David Letterman, we covered about 10 or so indicators. But I think if you do come to the expo, you will come back to the office and to the home with probably dozens more. Well worth um, carving out the day, if you can. Thursday, October 28th, mark it on your calendar. Please go to abdexpo.com for the full itinerary. And thank this man for um, bringing this um, effort and mission. And I'm so excited and appreciate you, sir. My pleasure. And it's to serve you all. It really is to serve you as the folks who have impact in the culture of your companies and to serve the folks who work there and to serve the people, the, the clients that you're also serving. All those are going to be impacted positively if you come and embrace the things at this expo. Look forward to seeing you on October the 28th. It is a Thursday, and take care and continued good culture for you and at your company.